<laughs> is it really? Yeah. Is there a time? Yep. <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, you guess we'll get this. Fine. What's up guys? Your boy Cameron Martin here. <coughs> <Yeah, okay. laughs> We're good. I just had a call. We're good. <laughs> That's how we're starting this. <laughs> we'll crop it right there. No, what crop? Why? We haven't okay. gotten nowhere. <laughs> What's up, guys? Your boy Cameron Martin here with my first ever interview for our pilot season starting here. If you guys like what you see today, it, feel bro. free <laughs> to like and subscribe. This first time. So, so this is my I'm cousin. Right this, now. Yeah, this is my cousin Edward. I call him Edward, but his real name is Manuel or Edward. Uh, I kind of go by two names, so it's kind of confusing right now, but either one that you know me by, that's what I go by. <laughs> yeah. So I can either be Manny or Edward, either one. It's Anyways, even confusing to myself and to him. This so. is his first time he's a little nervous, but you know, it's all good, because we're going to hear get the real details of his life. Because we, you know, as we grew up together, but it's, as the years gone by, we're all adults and we all work. I hardly get to see him, because my busy schedule, and then he has a busy schedule now, busy, busy schedule now, and... He has a fiance, he has a dog, he has his own apartment. I don't even know what the hell oh. goes on in his life. I find out through social media, like you guys. But now we're <clears> gonna <throat> find out what are what how he started painting, how he recently started doing tattoos, which is pretty freaking cool. So, where do you want to start? It's where do you throw it all in there? Um, what's up guys? Uh, again, I'm Manuel Edward, however you want to uh, go by that. I don't know if I should establish that right now, because like I said, most of my family calls me Edward, and then my friends and some relatives call me Manuel, so we'll go by Manuel. <laughs> I gotta get that squared, like, right now, because that's confusing to me, so, yeah, we'll go by Manuel, but it's kind of confusing because my dad's Manuel, but <laughs> either way, I'm the third, so, um, <laughs> really? Really? Alright, we're gonna cut right here. <laughs> He's the third. So, yeah, before I was so rudely interrupted... <laughs> Yeah, we'll go by manual, but um, I don't know. I don't. What I mean, where do you want to start? One of the few cousins that I have that are really like good. Cause I feel like all my cousins have like many talents, and they all like do stuff. But as they all <clears throat> gotten older, they all bring something different to our family's lives. Like, <clears throat> like now that he paints, you know, at first it was just like a little small hobby, where it's like you know a little cute flower. But then it got like really detailed, where it was like the flower came to life, and now he does like you guys could see. Oh, he's like, you guys should check out his Instagram too. You can check out some of his work. But just how much he's grown through that, just everything, <coughs> you know, how slowly he progressed through it and became like a fucking badass at art, you know, and where people were actually, they're actually buying his shit. Like they're buying his Thank stuff. You. Can we say shit? <coughs> <laughs> anyways, they're buying his stuff. They, they write him on Instagram, you know, and they, they ask, they request certain paintings. He fucking delivers it like better than what they expected. And now that he's doing tattoos, it's like, wow, what's going to happen next? So what, so I guess what I want to know is, because I recently just saw on his social media, he started doing tattoos. And at first I was like, who, what is he getting tattooed or, you know, whatever. But now I, and then I saw that he was doing tattoos, <clears throat> like he was tattooing people. So what actually got you into that from like painting canvases and... Yeah, so uh, I've always had like an idea to uh, do tattoos, but I don't know, it's still, it's like crazy to me that I'm marking people's skin um, for like, you know, forever. Uh, so I never wanted to do that because I never wanted to be responsible because I saw a lot of people that were young at the time getting tattoos for like, I don't know, just like bad reasons or they think they wanted something. <clears throat> and I don't want to have, I don't really want to be a part of that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, so for a long time, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> so for a long time, I just straight up just did not want to do that. Um, so for years, I kind of just like threw it off to the side uh, and just continuously progressed with my canvases. And then um, after I just got engaged, my uh, one of my my tattoo artists named Boog, he um, he reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, I have this extra set of equipment. <clears throat> you know, if you're looking to get into it, you know, I can give you some tips and then, um, you know, basically give this to you. And... You know, hearing it from him, you know, it, I thought it was pretty cool. And then obviously, like, I just read the message. I didn't know how to respond to it exactly. Um, I didn't know that. I, I, I don't know. It was just weird. It was a weird situation because, like I said, I just I just got engaged. Was so it I, like, was it like, a, really... was it like a passing of the torch type of thing where it's like, 
I feel like you could do this or were like, <clears throat> you talking to him before like you were interested in tattooing? I never mentioned it to him that I was ever interested. It just like randomly came about. And then uh, he's like, if you're ever interested, I mean, it's a, it's a good way to make extra income, you know? Um, Cause I, I guess he just heard about my engagement. So he just kind of threw out the tips up there. And then, um, so, you know, I thought about it for a couple of days and then, you know, I kind of just pulled the trigger and I was like, yo, let me go ahead and give this a shot. Um, mainly the, the tattoo side of it is just something that happens over time. And then, uh, so recently, you know, we had a friend over and I was like, hey, just joking around with her. Hey, would you want a tattoo? And she was like, yeah. And I got nervous because I thought she was just joking, but she was like, let's do it. And then um, I was like, I don't know if we can cuss, but I was like, fuck. You know, I was like, let's do it. So we went ahead and did it. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if I was supposed to say that, but yeah, we're going to break this in real, real nice. Um, so I went ahead and just did it. It came out really nice. And then from there, I just thought, I was like, you know what? Let me just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And I'm not good now. Um, I think I'm pretty good compared to people that have uh, maybe just start or mm -hmm. something like that. But I'm probably in like 10 tattoos which is pretty sick, you know, but I never, uh... Yeah, I man, it's, it's a process. Like, the one, the tattoo artist did mine, you know, he started when he was 15 as an apprentice, and then slowly I was like, oh, this is not, it's not serious. And then, yeah. But now he has his own tattoo shop, and, you know, he has his own, it's his, and he has his own employees there, which <clears> is <throat> freaking awesome. They're all very, very talented, too, but... Sorry, so when you, when you first did, okay, she tells you, hey, I want this tattoo, what... So did you, like draw it on her or did yeah. you know what you were doing she, or she gave me an idea of what she wanted which is just like a three-eyed smiley face so it's straight up just like three eyes just one two three and then a big smiley face and then um that was it so I, at least i went in there with the plan knowing what it was i, I wanted to do or at least that she knew what she wanted to do and it was pretty simple for me so i was like like i said let me just give it a shot and she took it like a champ man it was like right here on the ribs too so usually it hurts like really bad but she like did not flinch, so I never knew if I was going in deep enough or like anything like that. But I at least, I at least, um, <laughs> you know, wanted to make sure that ink was not gonna come out, you know. So it ended up turning out really good. So have you tattooed your fiance yet? Yes, I have. She here? She is not here at the moment. Oh. Yeah, but uh, no, I did. She was my third tattoo. Um, and my cousin was my second tattoo. So with your, so with your friend and your fiance, how how was the difference? Were you more comfortable with fian your fiance? I wanted like at the time I did the second tattoo and I felt really confident. I was like, I want to do another one. And then um, I was like, you want a tattoo? And she was like, I mean, what do I want? I was like, I was, I was just like, I don't know what I want. <clears throat> and then she had an idea that she wanted like a wave. Um, so I kind of tattooed a little wave right here on her, and. Um, yeah, I mean, over time, uh, like I said, she's not here, but there's a picture, <laughs> there's a picture up there. Uh, no, not really. But I, like I said, I mean, it was just, I felt it. So I was like, hey, let's just keep going. So I usually try to do it. If I do one tattoo, usually after that, after that first tattoo, I want to do another one. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not booked to where I can have them back to back. It's just. So is this something you're doing for fun or something you want to like grow into this, like everything else? <clears throat> Cause you have your, yes, yeah, so as you can see here, that's his own like logo. There. <clears throat> no, but um, no. Honestly, I, you know, I don't really have a set plan for it. Um, that's why I think right now it's pretty cool because I don't know what it can lead to. I think some, I always hear that you know, good things kind of come from things that aren't planned, and this tattoo thing was not planned at all. Um, and I think I've been progressing pretty well uh, as far as like my line work and stuff like that. I'm not trying to get into like any shading right now. I don't want to basically bought off more than I can chew because it's just permanent. And how old are you now? I'm 25. 25. 25. So you're 25. Where do you see yourself in five years when you're 30? Do you feel... Because he's like on a roller coaster. He's getting engaged. He has his own place. You know, he's living like the adult life and has grown as a good person so far. I he's very. That. He's like a good mentor, sort of like motivator speaker kind of. But he does a lot of things. He doesn't just do... It's a lot of... I guess the question I'm trying to ask you, how do you mentally prepare for everything that you do? Like, when do you express it through your art? And is that how you release some stress? Is that how you get your mind off things? Honestly, man, like, I usually, what, I try not to think about a lot. So I try to stay as busy as possible because I think, like, whenever I get bored or I have a lot of downtime, that I end up thinking, like, damn, I 
I have too much work to do. Like, I shouldn't be hanging out right here just chilling, watching Netflix or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I constantly just make myself keep going as far as, like, making myself busy. So whether it be another print that I have to get done or another canvas or another... Hell, I try to find a different hobby to make different money if, if one of these things is slowing down. So, I mean, it started off with painting canvases. Um, and then, not to get sidetracked on this question, but it started off making canvases. And then from there, it uh, ended up being into digital art. So a drawing from my iPad, getting it printed and selling that um, to where, you know, I started doing random pool tables that I would fix up that I just recently did for my grandfather. Oh, yes. Yeah, right. And then um, now this tattoo thing is just coming about. I just, like I said, when one thing slows down, I try to pick up another thing, which is probably a bad thing, but I'm just riding the wave right now, honestly. So with the digital prints, for people that don't know what that is, what exactly is that? You draw something on an iPad and then you basically put it on, print it on a canvas? Or? Yeah, so I, um, like two years ago, my fiance now, my girlfriend at then, uh, bought me a uh, iPad for my birthday, which is like truly like the best gift I probably ever received, like ever. Loki, I shed a tear. Cause it, I, I, I knew how long I've been wanting something like that to uh, take my business and like my artistic skills to that next level. Um, because at the time it was, I would have to draw it out on paper and then uh, basically upload it to the computer, do Adobe, it was a big long process. Uh, versus having the iPad, dude, you just straight have the iPad and you sketch. And uh, I would just draw images on my iPad you know, um, and then send it off to a company that I just recently uh, started working with. And we just print that um, image on a canvas. So it just stretches out the image. And it's a high quality canvas. Like I try not to sell like crap, you know. No, is this that. like, is this something that you're just drawing and people just buy or, is it, or are these just like different requests? Yeah, these are definitely requests. Uh, sometimes I do make random stuff that I want to make and that I want to reproduce. Um, but. Uh, whenever people, so if people hit me up, basically to get a canvas, so whether it be a painting or a digital, I give them two options depending on what their budget is. Um, so if, you know, of course I'm sure a lot of people would want an original piece. Um, but it takes time and it takes a lot of work and it's not something that happens fast. I mean, some people can turn on that creative switch. I personally, I'm a night owl. So like I stay up at night to kind of get my vibes to where I want to sit there and paint. Um, cause like you said, back to that first question, I mean, that's the way I, I look at it is relieving, um, tension, whether, whether if it's work related, uh, family related, whatever it may be, um, not bad tension, but obviously just any tension. Cause I mean, all the stuff that I'm doing or even anybody in the day, I mean, that takes attention, you know? So, so you say you're a night owl. So if you do wind up starting a piece, do you ask off like a few days off work or no. do you? Do you make sure you have enough time to do that? Or? No, definitely. Uh, me being a night owl is a bad thing, kind of, because I go to work every day at 6 a.m. Um, I try my best to get up early and, you know, obviously, you know, probably work out if I could, but sheesh, that's early already, you know? Um, but either way, I, I still go into my 9 to 5. My 9 to 5 is like my 6 to 2, and then I do something else from 3 to 7. And then from there, in between 7... So nighttime, I mean, I have to make time to paint or if not paint, do a tattoo or um, do a, my drawing on my digital art yet alone. I mean, I have a fiance, you know, I have a dog. I have family too. We're Mexican, so we have a lot of family that have get togethers. And I mean, we got to throw them in there too, you know? So I try my best to, to balance it all as much as possible. So as of right now, 2019, what is your biggest inspiration and what motivates you to keep doing what you do honestly this room um i kind of just got this room about uh let's say nine months ago about nine months ago and um i just love coming in here i mean it's filled with all my stuff that i've done and i just look at every time i look at a painting i look at it as like a time in my life that i was either going through something or i just did something whether it be an accomplishment or just something that was like a learning phase or something like i just you know like, I, I don't know. I just know at this time when I was painting this one, I was living at home. You know, I had to move back home in order to, like, make some things work. And I painted that there, so I was just, I remember that, you know. Um, so you're like time stamps. Defi- yeah, definitely. Um, so I try, some pieces I try my best to kind of hold on to, like the ones that I truly, I like. And I have that, um, that emotional connect. 
I try to keep those, but then I also sell duplicates. That way people can have that painting and can enjoy it as well. Not only just me. So what's your, cause I know like for me, like getting started with this YouTube thing and my, getting my own market out there, it's targeting a certain audience. So is there yeah. a certain audience that you want to trigger to, or is there just anyone that is trying to get to know who you are in your work? Oh no, I mean, I don't, I mean, a lot of people like art, so I try to paint a lot of different styles. I mean, most of my artwork isn't the same style. So I try to be really versatile and try to like, try different things and new techniques and new colors. And so, I mean, some things might look like a girl canvas. Some things might look like a guy canvas, whatever, right? You know, unisex. So there's no labels. Yeah, yeah, no labels. So like my, what I try to inspire is just to continue doing what you like to do. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's a category. But there's a lot of people that are not um, doing what they want to do because they feel like they are working that nine to five and they don't have that time. But I mean, you never know that do you doing what you like to do might lead you to something better than your nine to five. You know, I mean, I don't think I'm, I mean, I accomplished a lot, but like I'm not where I want to be. But I definitely have grown since that first canvas that I did, you know, and it led me to this, you know, and, and I, I don't know. I think it's really cool, and I think people should pursue that, you know, because people are going to support you, whether you're... It doesn't matter what you're doing. You can be collecting golf balls, but if people really see that you love collecting golf balls, dude, they're going to give you... You're going to support them. Yeah, it doesn't matter what they're going to do. They're going to find a way to support you, so... I just want to push everybody that, like, if you want to... Whatever it is that you want to do and you think you can't, you should just try to try, you know, try your best to uh, to make it work, you know? because I agree yeah I mean you never know where it can lead you all right so last question so where can they find you where can they follow and see your stuff or even purchase anything uh right now I try to mainly operate on Instagram because that Instagram is popping I love Instagram uh that's the only that's usually where I spend most of my time but Instagram you can find me at mg projects underscore so m g p r o it's right there under the link yeah I'll put it down (laughs) But uh, MG Projects, that's my art page where I usually post most of my art. Um, but I'll throw up my personal page, which is uh, at M-A-N-G-T-Z. I usually, you know, just post my family and my dog, my fiance, and uh, just everything I love, which is them. So that's what it is. That's what it's all for. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Take one. <clears throat> we are here a lot. <laughs> no, all right, all right guys, welcome talk. to the no, first talk normal. Like, talk normal. I am. No. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good introduction. I love that. It's natural. <laughs> See, talk normal. I, I am. <laughs> hey, but. <laughs> You want to start it up? This is your page. So we're going. Basically, oh. it's your page. And I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna be chilling, but I'll be honest. <laughs> that bull face. His fucking battery's on. The <laughs> and then he's like, okay, so we, this doesn't take yet. that long, right? Only like 15 minutes. What kind of questions are you gonna ask? It's like you just don't even tell you. Yeah, yeah, don't tell me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, jeez, let's just start. Come on. Who's me? It's not me. I've been sitting here ready. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs>